So if we want to be honest here, Shad Khan, his story is the good that can come out of immigration. It should be inspirational to all of us. In some ways, the epitome of the American dream. Here's a guy that emigrated to the U.S. at the age of 16 from Pakistan. And you're talking about it. Shad Khan did this in the late 1960s. This is not exactly the best time to be coming to America when you didn't look like a pasty face. You know what I mean? You know, he went to school at the University of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana. His first job, I think he was washing dishes for like a buck and a quarter an hour. He later on would go on to graduate with a degree in engineering. Eventually met his wife, who he's been married to, I think, for like 44, 45 something years. Had a son and a daughter. You know, two kids and a dog type of white picket fence. All-American dream. Started off after college at a company called Flexingate and was a director of engineering there. Within about a decade or so, positioned himself to be in a spot where he could buy that company and has taken Flexingate to a spot where it's one of the 50 largest privately held U.S. corporations or U.S. companies, excuse me. And Shad Khan's in the top 100 rankings for the richest people in the world. All that from a 16-year-old that emigrated to the U.S. to come to school working as a dishwasher for like a buck twenty an hour. That's crazy. You know, it put him in a position where he could buy the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2011, buy the Fulham Football Club in 2013, be the financing founder of All Elite Wrestling. Like, these are the stories that dreams are made of. And you do that to make a better way for yourself and more importantly your family, your seed, your legacy if you will. And he certainly has done that for his son, Tony Khan. And I totally get for a lot of wrestling fans that they might look at Tony Khan and they see themselves in him. This kind of uber excitable fanboy that isn't going to take shit from Vince McMahon, is willing to stand up to Vince McMahon, take the fight to Vince McMahon, represents more of what you feel like professional wrestling should be about, what professional wrestling means to you and what is important to you with this form of entertainment. So I get it. Like you see a Tony Khan that has come in and in a couple of years has given you a second viable North American professional wrestling option on a mainstream level to at least some degree. Now, are we talking about like Attitude Era or shitty or Ruthless Aggression Era or shit even 10 years ago, TNA and WWE Raw and SmackDown levels of mainstream? Hell no. But you're talking about an AEW that gets two hours of primetime cable television on a top cable network in TNT every Wednesday night at least until they move in TBS in 2022, but still. And then gets another hour on Friday. Yes, the time slot's not the greatest in the world, but 10 to 11 Eastern. They get three hours of technically prime time cable television slot on a featured, you're not featured, but a very prominent cable network. Tony Khan's been an instrumental part of that. So a lot of you look at him as kind of your wrestling savant, your wrestling genius, your wrestling savior. And this shit's got to stop. This cult of personality that's been bubbling under the surface for a couple of years now and is only growing and getting larger involving Tony Khan is dangerous. To AEW, it's dangerous to professional wrestling. It's dangerous to the way that everybody interacts with each other talking about wrestling or just how we talk about professional wrestling in general. This shit has to stop. You can like the guy and respect the guy and yet still not go out of your way to fucking bend over backwards like you do. You guys act like he is the second coming of Jesus Christ of wrestling or something. And let's be honest, a lot of you put in his situation, in his spot, given the same opportunities that his dad's fortune afforded him, could do at least what Tony Khan could do, if not better. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. You say, well, he's the one in the position that's doing it. 
But yeah, how many people would do even better than what he's doing? Or at least the same as what he's doing? I'm not saying he's terrible at his job or anything like that. I'd say that about what he does with the Jaguars and Fulham Football Club. Um, he's not terrible with AEW. But this cult of personality is starting to create an environment which is encouraging him to act like some fucking geeked out wrestling forum poster on the social media. And that's stupid. You're looking at this and you're saying, this is a billionaire and this is how a billionaire acts? Well, then you're also like, well, he's not really technically a billionaire. He's got inherited wealth. You know, that's how well, many people are like that. His daddy didn't inherit a billion, but Tony certainly has inherited several billions is whatever. But to those that sit there and want to say that he's going to be the new king of professional wrestling or he already is the king of the professional wrestling scene, that he's going to go head to head against WWE and win, let time play that shit out. When you got to go to the lengths and the extremes that some of you do to have to bid out that propaganda, to tell that story, to try and advance that narrative, it just makes it so obvious about why he exactly is not that dude. Because when you really honestly take a look at it, what the fuck in Tony Khan's history would indicate to you that he is going to be a long-term wrestling savior or that AEW is in great hands for a long time to come? Because even when you talk about AEW, we always act like it's Tony Khan. No, the impression that I get is that it's Shad Khan's money and that this is just something for Tony Khan to do and that Tony Khan really has a passion for it. He really loves it and I'm not taking it away from him because he clearly does. He's a mark for this shit. He's Dixie Khan. He's Tony Carter. Hey, you know what? It's nice to have people actually love professional wrestling be in professional wrestling sometimes. But yeah more like a trust fund kid than he is some business savant. Like, look at the shit that he's done with the Fulham Football Club. And I hope I'm saying it right. Who gives a shit if I am or not? It's football. It's only the most popular sport in the world, but here in America, we hate that shit. And that's a club he's been involved with. He's vice chairman, I think, director of football operations, general manager, all of that. I think, didn't they make it up to the Premier League for just a short period of time and they're relegated down to the second level? So he's a part, he's inherited due to nepotism because again, his father's the one that bought the team, got into this position, and he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Right? Wrong? Okay. He's been the chief football strategy officer, which primarily means he's been very heavily into the analytics of the Jacksonville Jaguars operation since 2012. And in that time, says Tony Khan has had a major significant leadership position within the Jacksonville Jaguars working for his daddy. There are whopping 40 and 110 in terms of their win-loss record. One year of a playoff appearance, that was back in 2017. The guy that you sit there and talk about being this genius or being this mastermind is the same clown whose analytics thought that Blake Bortles was worth the third overall pick in the 2014 draft when I said he was lucky to be a third round talent. This, this is the guy that you're pointing to with absolutely very little in the way of supporting evidence to say that he's going to be the one to take down Vince McMahon or he can legitimately on a long-term basis compete, compete with Vince McMahon. All those first round picks that were fucking bust and all of this other crap. You talk about him being a billionaire. Again, that comes from his daddy, not him. And this cult of personality like starts to enable, I think, Tony Khan to get a little disconnected from reality, take his eye off the ball, which is my whole point about this whole thing with the Friday Night Wars between SmackDown and AEW Rampage. Who won? Nobody fucking won, you idiots. Everybody loses. Those numbers were a joke. They were an embarrassment. Embarrassment. Even if you want to say, well, AEW beat WWE head-to-head -head in the key demo. Yeah, and they still lost 70,000 viewers from the 10 to 1015 to 1015 to 1030 block of time. They lost 70,000 viewers in the key demo. And the key demo number is soft as shit. And WWE, oh, they won their fucking overall viewers and still under a million. And that fucking 18 to 49 demo number was soft as shit too. Nobody won. Just being petty and undercutting each other, trying to win a pissing contest. And nobody wins and ultimately everybody loses. And those who don't learn from history are goddamn doomed to repeat it. So of course that brings me to Ted Turner. And for some particular reason, Tony Khan wants to call out Ted Turner in some weird way and take a shot at him. 
Like, you guys need to stop enabling. And by you guys, I mean the fans and the enablers of Tony Khan that encourage this type of behavior, that support this type of bullshit. Well, if Ted Turner knew 1% about wrestling like I did, here's what Ted Turner knew, is everything he basically fucking touched turned to gold. Founded CNN, TBS, eventually Turner Broadcasting, whole organization. You know the fucking networks that you're on? He's the owner of the Atlanta Braves for an extended period of time when they were a top, top, top organization in baseball. They were the NL equivalent of the Yankees minus the multiple World Series titles in the 90s, but they got their World Series ring in 95 and they had several other World Series appearances. So, so you're hearing a theme here? CNN, top cable news network. TBS, eventually TNT. Turner Broadcasting, a giant in the media industry. Owner of the Atlanta Braves. When they were on top. Owner of world class cha or world championship wrestling. <laughs> Fitz Fritz von Eric. Owner of world championship wrestling. WCW. The only company that's ever went head to head with Vince and beat him in any way for any significant period of time. 83 weeks. How do you know that number? Because Eric Bischoff will never shut up about it. Although he's right about you, you just need to shut up and wrestle at this point. Fucking Ted Turner in his free time to have some fun. He went and won America's Cup of Sailing. Like, yes, he comes from a somewhat similar circumstance in terms of some inherited wealth, but he certainly didn't inherit the billions that you fucking did and the opportunities that you did. You can actually point to Ted Turner building several different organizations that were successful for different periods of time. Meanwhile, we talk about AEW Dynamite. And two years ago, their debut episode, running head-to-head -head against NXT in that same time slot, did 1.409 million viewers, a .68 in the 18-49 to 49 demo. With head-to-head -head competition! With head-to-head -head competition! Over 2.2 million people watched wrestling on that Wednesday night. Two fucking years later! Two years later! That two-year anniversary edition of Dynamite, which featured Adam Hagman Page's return and the gimmicky match and all this other bullshit, you're down to 1.053 million viewers and a .37 in the 18 to 49 demo. Baseball bullshit, all those other excuses, soft as fuck. Meanwhile, you had 2.2 million people watching wrestling just two years ago. Now is less than that on Wednesday. You went from 2.2 on Wednesday between your show and NXT to barely a million. And you're celebrating this guy like he's some type of fucking savant or savior or Jesus Christ or wrestling. And you say, well, that's a bad week because of all the excuses that you want to call out. All right, let's go to the September 29th, 2021 edition. Can't use the playoffs excuse here. 1.152 million viewers. So still half of the wrestling audience that watched wrestling on wrestling. Wednesday night, two years ago, 0.45 in the 18 to 49 demo. Not a terrible number, respectable number, but certainly not something of worth doing backflips for and calling a guy a fucking genius and going to these great lengths to defend him at every pathetic opportunity you can. And by the way, those last two numbers, again, without NXT running head to head. And meanwhile, when you look at the past couple of months, the only thing that's really truly grown for AEW is one pay-per-view buy rate. Reportedly, got to give them that, somewhere around 200,000 views. Although sometimes you wonder, like, just how much of that you can believe when it comes from the mouth of Meltzer and others. It's like those that say, AEW is really profitable. Why? And then they'll link you to a fucking article that Tony Khan said they're very profitable. Oh, yeah, because no CEO of a company ever lied about their profit margin. That's not to say that, he's, that he is, but that isn't saying that he isn't. But in two years, over 50% of the people that watch wrestling on a Wednesday night aren't watching anymore. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear bullshit. Give me a break. Even if you want to say Nielsen's underreporting a little bit, sure they are. They always have been. But it's still not good. The only thing that went up significantly is the goddamn payroll, bringing in guys like Punk and Brian Danielson and Cole. Oh, this is going to be a seismic shift. It hasn't shifted shit. Predictably. 
little bit of a bump, and then come right back fucking down. And then you look at this Rampage stuff. I try not to take it too hard on Rampage, because they are clearly the secondary show, and that's fine. It serves a purpose, especially with that bloated-ass roster. But that episode of Rampage with CM Punk had 1.129 million viewers, did 692,000 viewers in that critical 18 to 49 key demo. That's fantastic. For a secondary show, 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern on a Friday night. Not sustainable, obviously, but that's a great number there. Absolutely great number. Everybody should have been thrilled with that because it was fantastic. Context matters. Less than two months later, running head-to-head, -head, I guess 30 minutes of SmackDown, doing some commercial-free bullshit and everything else, 578,000 viewers, a .24 in the 18 to 49 demo. 313,000 viewers in that demo. In two months, lost over 50% of that key demo audience. But they won, right? Give me a fucking break. You got Tony Khan tweeting at Darren Ravel and shit-talking Vince McMahon. Why are you encouraging this? This is not good. This is not the type of behavior you want to see from a wrestling executive. Or any executive of any damn company worth a damn for that matter. You think it's cool maybe because, oh, he's doing what I would do. Well, that's probably exactly the fucking reason why you're not in that position. And maybe he shouldn't either. Tony Khan can represent some really good things to the industry and the world of professional wrestling. There is no question about that. And we have seen some of that. He's been willing to take risks. He's been willing to take chances. He's helped to create a second successful North American wrestling company. But a wrestling god, he is not. A wrestling savant, he is not. All this talk about, what did you do? You squeaked out a meaningless small demo victory against SmackDown, and what does that get you? In two months, you damn near lost 50% of your viewership and over 50% of the key demo of Rampage. Maybe a little less worry about what the other guys are doing and a little more worry about your own house. And the fans that want to sit there and suck this guy off with everything that he does, you've got to stop this. It does not make you a Tony Khan hater. It does not make you a bad person to disagree with somebody because God knows you guys do it with fucking me all the time. And that's great. We shouldn't always agree. Shouldn't it always be trying to polish my chrome or whatever? You should keep that in mind with Tony Khan. He pisses and shits out of the same hole as you do. If you were in his spot, you probably wouldn't do what much worse. You could potentially do the same. You might even do better. Let's be real here. But this is unhealthy behavior. It is going to have consequences. If it's not checked and it doesn't stop. Stop encouraging Tony Khan to do all this tweeting and blasting and wrestle forum posting like he fucking does on Twitter and social media. It's not productive. AEW needs to go back to the drawing board here a little bit and figure out what the hell they're doing. Figure out what their vision is. Figure out where they want to go. You're not in a position to compete head to head with WWE. This is not that time, nor should it be now, nor necessarily should it be ever. Focus on yourself and what you can do as well as you possibly can. Because you've got a lot of fucking work there. You brought in Brian Danielson. Really honestly, what the fuck are you doing with him? Oh, we're having some dream matches. Okay, t -t today, Junior, get to the fucking point. CM Punk. If you went with the story of, man, he's going to work with all the young competition so he can bury their fucking asses because he wants to make sure nobody's left in his wake when he goes and gets that fucking world championship. That's doing something. Instead, you're going into the nostalgia box. And I see all the time these excuses. Oh, you do, 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 do. It's okay. It's okay. It's not fucking okay. Look at the numbers. Good Christ. You would think you were on Tony Khan's payroll the way some of you were acting. Are you Meltzer Magoo? No, then stop it! Are you Brian Alvarez? No, then stop it! 
It's clear where their biases lie. They're in the tank. We all fucking know it. They have been since day one and even before day one. That's their jam. It doesn't mean it needs to be yours. You should see the same type of action back in the day with a WCW and an ECW. And where the fuck are they? You should see the same shit with TNA. Where the fuck are they? You should see the same shit with ROH. What state are they in now? Getting into that bubble where you get so protective over everyone and everything in, involved with it is not productive. It's not healthy. And this cult of personality you have around Tony Khan is not healthy either. This shit's got to stop. It's great. He used his dad's money to create a second successful North American wrestling company. Great. Good for him. That's awesome. We can all benefit from that. Absolutely. And he absolutely does not deserve to be bowed down like he's some type of fucking king. Because maybe if he was more competent at his job, AEW would be in an even better position than they are right now. Do you ever think about that? They have all the millions that they've invested and this is the best that they've done. There has been no functional real growth outside of adding that third hour of television on Friday night with Rampage. Where has the growth been? They survived the pandemic. That's fantastic. That's what the benefit of having great deep pockets and resources can provide you. But more than double the people just two years ago watched wrestling on a Wednesday night. I don't want to hear your excuses about it was a debut. Blah, 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 blah. They have fewer people watching now on a Wednesday night than when they had competition head to head. Those two shows then were doing far more viewers than AEW running alone on Wednesday night is doing. Should focus on how to grow your audience. This whole thing of, we don't want to grow our audience. Focus on the hard course. And that's going to lead to you eventually dying, you dumb dicks. Stop being selfish. If you truly care, you truly want this product to grow, you want this brand to become bigger than WWE, supplant WWE as the top dog in the game, then you need to challenge Tony Khan, not kiss his fucking ass and give him a fucking job of the perineum with your tongue every goddamn time. Expect better, demand better, and expect that the leader of a freaking major North American wrestling company doesn't act like some mid-twenties fucking poster on a wrestling forum on goddamn social media. So what thing are you or I do it because we're idiots. I should not be looking at a wrestling company and say, hey, that's run by, by an idiot like me. That's not a good thing. You gotta stop this shit, man. His previous track record in other areas indicates he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. For now, he's been able to buy himself a certain position in terms of professional wrestling because of his daddy's money. Let's be clear here. Okay? Where is that growth? Where is that next level? It's all gimmicks and tricks and bullshit. At what point in time do you start questioning your dude here? Are you? I think about doing that now before he gets out of pocket. And all of you trying to spin what happened with Friday as a win are just making the problem worse. That is not behavior that should be encouraged. That is not something that should be viewed by as win by anybody. I've just given you some numbers to talk about how much of a loser AEW and WWE are in all this. I really didn't even talk much about the WWE numbers, but to be clear, they're fucking losers too. The mere fact that they're even wasting any time at all thinking about AEW is both a sign of respect to AEW and a sign of stupidity by WWE. I don't see how people can be so biased, like spin every single thing. It's always some type of positive bullshit. At some point in time, that shit's going to kick rocks, man. And at some point in time, you got to expect and demand better. And you got to expect and demand better behavior out of the guy running the show. When are you going to start challenging Tony Khan to put up or shut up? When is he going to produce better? Because all I'm seeing right now is a downward trajectory that absolutely should not be celebrated or excused should be questioned and should be a sign of concern. But of course, in the Meltzer Magoo 
Alvarez created bubble. So many of you just worship at the altar of Tony Khan that you would never bother to ask those legitimate questions like you should.